This is Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined once again by Hannah Rankin. Hannah, how are you? Doing very well, thank you. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Um, you've obviously got a second world title shot at Super Welterweight. Actually, or is it your first at Super Welterweight? You've had one at Super Middle, one at Middle, two at Middle. No. So your first my, at Super Welter. My second at Super Welter. I won the yeah. IBO at Super Welter before. Ah, okay. All right. Yeah, I, I don't always count the IBO, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna. We can, we can argue people. about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, another time, <laughs> another time. Um, but yeah, uh, Friday night, fireworks night, of course, on Fight Zone TV. Maria Lindbergh. Um, you were looking to go down to welterweight. Was it just the case of this came up and it was too good an opportunity to miss at 154? Yeah. So basically, I for welterweight in March and um, I was going to fight again on the Hamilton show, the fight zone Hamilton show um, in Scotland in July. And I was looking to do an eight round or another, or another welterweight fight. But um, the opportunity came up to fight for the WBA and, and Dennis Hobson and fight zone said, would I like to headline the show and fight for the WBA world title? Obviously being my first fight with Dennis Hobson, I'm pretty impressed. He's managed to get me a world title to start off with. So I'm, I'm very happy about that. Um, and it just so happens that IBO has been added uh, later down the line. So, uh, yeah, two belts on the line and uh, chance, like you said, to win one of the big four that everyone goes on and on, on about. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> I'm very, very excited. Uh, how much can we kind of discern about Maria Lindbergh from that fight with Savannah Marshall? It's, it's the one that most people in the UK will remember her for, but obviously not her greatest showing. No, I mean, I don't think you can really take a lot from it, to be honest. It was uh, on two or three days' notice. So, I mean, most you could take from that really is that Maria, she doesn't care. She's she's willing to take a fight. She's in shape most of the time. So it's not like she's um, she's scared to take a fight. So that's probably the most you can take from that fight. She hasn't, I was looking earlier, she hasn't beaten a fighter with a winning record since 2015. How, why do you feel she qualifies for the title shot? Is it kind of the legacy performances that she's had in the past? Yeah, she's fought multiple um, world titles, for multiple world titles herself. Hmm. Um, I think she's been pretty unlucky in some of those decisions, to be perfectly honest. Um, when she fought uh, Eva Pietkowska for the WBC. I had her up on the cards for that one. And um, and she also, she's fought like Emma Cozen as well. Um, and you know, I think she's been unlucky with a few of the decisions. Um, she's got a great list of people that she's fought over the years. She's been in with some of the top level fighters, uh, a bit like myself, great experience. So, you know, I think it's a it's a good fight and it's, it's one that people are going to enjoy watching because she always turns up for a fight just like myself. A lot of people will have seen your fight with Savannah Marshall as well. Tell us what the difference is between Hannah Rankin at middleweight and down at 154. Well, I'm not really a middleweight. <laughs> so that, <laughs> yeah. that, that pretty much answers that question. You know, like the difference, obviously you can see the difference between myself and Savannah on fight night. Just the height difference, the size difference is just, you know, she's she's someone that's coming down to middleweight. I mm. eat up to middleweight. <laughs> so <laughs> it's not like it's my natural weight class. And I think all fighters will say that they perform better in their natural weight class. Um, super welter for me is a great weight, um, but I can easily make welter weight too. So obviously that was my intention moving down uh, at the beginning of the year but when opportunity comes up to fight for a world title and take a, and take a world title home to Scotland you know I'm definitely taking it so either or super world or world for me but right now I'm focused on the super world weight titles it would be a great achievement but it's also great leverage if you do then decide to move down to 147 you've kind of got something to offer either as a catch weight or because of your increased profile absolutely and I think that's what a lot of fighters need to remember you know like it's, it's kind of like you know, a bargaining tool for you when you become world champion. If you have ambitions to go to other weight classes or to fight for multiple world titles, you know, having one of your own immediately your stock raises. Um, and obviously all fighters want to be a world world champion. So, you know, it's, it ticks a lot of boxes. It must be hard to put it into words, but given the amount of times you've challenged previously, how long you've been in your career and where you started as well. What would it mean to you to finally win that world title, that WBA belt? It would mean everything to me. I'm not going to lie. Um, it, it's, it's a massive night for me because coming up um, for a chance for me to win this world title um, in my second home in London, really headlining a show as the A-side a fighter for a change, you know, <laughs> um, it's, it's going to mean the absolute world. It, 
this is a culmination of five and a half, six years of work with myself and Noel Callan, taking me from absolutely nothing down at white collar to, to this, to where I'm going to be fighting on Friday. And it's a real chance for me to showcase my um, development and how I've leveled up as I've gone through and take from all the experience from all the fights I've done before. Uh, yeah, to put on a showcase for everybody. So yeah, it's going to mean the absolute world. And it's at the uh, Tottenham Hotspur ground. I have to ask, are they your London team? Uh, I don't actually support football. Um, <laughs> growing up in Scotland, it's either, you know, you're very much stuck with one side or the other. So my mum was like, you just don't like football. <laughs> but, yeah, I, right. I, you know, um, I do I, I admire the stadium massively. I've been to visit it and check it out and everything. It's very, very impressive. And obviously it was amazing for AJ's fight as well. Like mm -hmm. it's super high tech, uh, the setup's brilliant inside. So it's a fantastic venue for events as well. And what about the exposure on Fight Zone as well? They're obviously new, new player in the market, but so far so good, it seems. And this one of their biggest nights so far. Absolutely. And I think Fight Zone has been a, an amazing platform that's come out of the pandemic. It's a real positive to have come out of it. Um, it's a chance for people to see British boxing right from the very beginning of a, a small hall fighter, from, at the beginning of their journey and help follow them through. Uh, and the opportunity is to maybe take a couple of harder fights earlier on in your career, but having the public viewing, viewing your chances and, and viewing how well you're doing is actually a real positive. Um, for me, like obviously my world title fight this weekend and, and then Jack Massey is going to be fighting for the IBO world title a couple of weeks after that. They're back up in Scotland. They're in Leicester. They're in Sheffield. They're in London. You know, I think it's really exciting that they're sort of showcasing British boxing from various cities all around the UK you know it's, it's actually quite it's quite nice and you get to see some of those really exciting fights that you would never normally see um my favorite fight this year was Dan Morley versus Louis Isaacs down at York Hall Southern fantastic area fight yeah it was an eliminator and it was absolutely like barnstorming of a fight and uh, I'm really glad that people got to see that and I'm sure that's raised the stock of Dan Morley and Louis Isaacs and it'll help them build a, their business around being a professional boxer because more people will know who they are. I think that's quite important. So going into Friday, just to refocus on that, what do you think are the areas where you have the advantages over Maria Lindbergh? What's going to give you the edge? So obviously, I think obviously I've got youth in my advantage, <laughs> definitely. Um, but yeah, I'm also, I think I'm just going to be too big and too strong for her. Um, I've got the reach advantage and uh, things I've been working on in the gym. If I execute what I've been doing and achieving in the gym, especially if we were in my sparring that I've had, then I'm going to shine on Friday night. I mean, she appears to be someone, as you were saying before about yourself at middleweight, that maybe she eats up to the weight because coming in at short notice gets Marshall. She was still only just over the, the limit. Yeah, I mean, she's extremely um, disciplined. You know, she manages a lot of uh, amateur fighters as well. She lives in Hamburg. So she's around, she has a gym. She's in, in the gym reg every day. You know, she's looking after people and she takes care of her, herself as well. So I think she, she's, she could be a welterweight, you know, and like myself, you know, could go down to welterweight. She's not a massive 154, you know, so um you know, it's, it's interesting in the women's in women's fight game because you see us go between the weights a lot yeah. more than the guys. Um, but I think that's just due to the fact that opportunities come up, like you said. Um, and we, you know, Amanda Serrano is amazing. She's in, been in so many different weight classes and yeah. been a champion. So it's madness. But yeah, it, it, I think that's part of it. But she's she is a small world, a super welter, I would say. And. Should it all go your way on Friday night, would you be aiming to unify at 54 or would you still be looking to drop down to 47? Or again, is it just about opportunity? So when I win on Friday night, um, I think that, yeah, the opportunity to unify would be something that would be really appealing to me. I'd love to unify the vision. I mean, that's insane. Uh, like, <laughs> obviously, one of my biggest heroes is Josh Taylor. He's undisputed at super lightweight. Um, from Scotland and I, I would absolutely love to emulate something similar to that it, and have, go undisputed in, in another weight class um, but obviously if the opportunity was to come up to go down and challenge for the welterweight world titles obviously Jessica McCaskill she has all the titles at the moment um, I would definitely take that opportunity I think it would be a great fight and uh, it would be an exciting one as well that's great stuff. Has Josh Taylor unified them, them titles, all four of them? Has that been a, an inspiration for you as he's done it? Or was he, were you already a big fan of his previous to that? 
Well, I've been watching his career for quite a while anyway. Uh, like when I, when I got into boxing and I was doing my research into the boxing world and as everything's going, I've been watching him and he's just something special. And uh, the fact that he comes from my home country and yeah, he's just achieved so much on the world stage. It's, it's definitely a huge inspiration. And I know he's a massive inspiration to like a lot of uh, young Scottish boxers coming through, just like Ricky Burns. He's another one of my inspira inspirations as well. They've done so much in the sport and it, it's really impressive. You must be a huge inspiration, particularly to Scottish female boxers coming through, though, surely, given the status you've already achieved. Oh, I, I hope so. I really want people to feel inspired to, you know, get involved in boxing, especially young girls coming through. Because, you know, Scotland doesn't have that many professional female fighters. So I think there's maybe three of us, four of us. So, um, yeah, no, it's like, you know, it'd be great to see more talent coming through. And I, I do get contacted by the parents of young girls coming through for advice and, and things like that. So I'm really happy that I've had a positive uh, impact on the sport. And hopefully people will look up to me and see that it's possible for them to follow a journey into the professional boxing as well. If you win, and I have to say, if from a professional perspective, you can obviously say when, um, it'd be great to see you defend the title or unify it back in Scotland. Oh, absolutely. You know, like fighting in front of a home crowd, like there's nothing like a Scottish crowd, like they're, they're nuts. <laughs> so yeah. To, yeah, to fight at home in front of them and defend my world titles there, that would just be, yeah, absolutely epic. Particular venue in Scotland you'd like to, to headline at? I'd love to headline the Hydro, you know, yeah. like that's an epic venue. Um, and it's, it's one of our main ones and it's one where, you know, some of the best fights, some great fights have really happened. So for me, it'd be, it'd be epic to be in the Hydro and headline there. Great stuff. Well, really, really appreciate your time. Um, I think I'll see you at the press conference slash weigh in on uh, Thursday. Uh, yeah. But yeah, best of luck on uh, Friday night and hopefully we'll have a, a new world champion. Absolutely. Thanks so much for getting in touch, Dan. Cheers. Always take care.